Yes, my friends, it is still raining outside. We are still flooded in. We cannot go anywhere. So what better can we do than putting something into these shelves, right? And we've got something. We've got a nice, beautiful delivery here of 16 EVE, EV, EVE batteries. And I talked about this for a long time. I always said we are very close to install the battery in the shelf and it never happened until today. Welcome back guys to the off quick garage in, yeah, you can see the weather outside yourself. Power wall and the battery shelf. This all works amazing. I'm very, very happy. I'm super happy. I'm extremely pleased with what we have built here. It is super nice. A lot of fun to watch when the multi-plus inverter starts the Phoenix inverter as a generator to support the load. It is amazing. It is really good. Get some light in here. Oh yeah, here. We've got uh, minus five amps outside. Not good. So, these are all 16 cells for our battery bank. And I remember I have done, I have done another video here on the channel already. It's a, while, it's a while ago. But I explained I wanted to have the negative on this side and the positive on this corner here not on the opposite side as you usually would have. And I think I sold this one as a new design, but it's really not. You can even have the positive and the negative here and then work your way over here, right? So it doesn't really matter, but I want to have the negative here and the positive over here in the corner. So you need to arrange all the bus bars and have a connection here and a connection here. And we are also not going to do any compression, any fixing, any strapping, any, uh, any clamping, nothing like this. In fact, I will have a little gap in between the cells from around one to two millimeters, I would say. Just like this. So if they expand, they can do this freely without putting any force or any tension on the terminals, on the bus bars, nothing like this. And we need two of the end links here to connect these rows together, because they are a bit longer. So one over there and one over here. Bang. And then we've got here positive, negative, positive, negative. I'm just making sure I'm not doing any mistake here. Of course I'm wearing my safety goggles. Positive, negative. And positive, negative. And then we jump on the other side and keep going until we have reached the other end here. But we are not going to close the magic circle. Not today, guys, not today. <laughs> There we go. Okay, so this is the layout of the battery I want to have in the shelf there then. And you also may remember I want to use um, such kind of terminals here to connect our balance leads from each shell to these terminals. And then we connect our BMS over here and we can connect another device like an active balancer or another BMS onto the other row of terminals. I have, to, I have ordered different terminals though. I don't want to use 2 times 16 but these terminals I have ordered they have got one entrance and two exits. One for the BMS and one is for the balancer or for any other device we want to connect to the battery then. And I also don't want to use any ring lugs anymore to connect our balance leads here to the terminals. I want to drill a little hole here and tap this with M3 or M4 and then have the ring lugs connected to the bus bar directly and it goes out in a nice shape to our terminals down here then. And I'm still not sure if I should use this fuse actually. Um, I was going to use one, it's a 5 amp little class fuse here directly connected to the ring terminal and from here there would be the balance lead soldered on 
back to our terminal row next to the battery. But um, not sure. On one hand, it would be good to have all these balance cables coming from the battery cells uh, fused. Just from a pure safety perspective, it's always good to have a fuse or a breaker in between. But I've got them only as 5 amp fuses here at the moment. So, and if we connect a 5 amp active balancer, this would already max out the fuse, right? Yeah, I should have bought the 10 amp fuses actually. But I thought I'm using these ones here for actual lithium ion batteries. Just to fuse each individual cell. But at the moment I'm not doing any experiments or any projects with lithium ion batteries. So I've got all these 5 amp fuses lying around here. Okay, I'll um, think about it if I use these ones or order 10 amp fuses or don't use fuses at all. I'm not sure yet. I haven't made up my mind. One of the first decisions to make. We haven't even started yet. So here I could solder I could solder the fuse to the ring terminal then to have best contact and then solder the balance lead cable from here all the way to our terminal. That would be one solution, then have a little heat shrink over it. Well, I'm still unsure. Okay, what I'm going to do now anyway is I have to drill a little hole here and tap it with M3 on all the bus bars. And I want to I wanna have this connection a little bit further to the positive there. And I want to have this hole a bit further towards the positive of this bus bar. Just so um, we know exactly which battery positive it is actually measuring. It wouldn't make a difference. This is just um, me. This is just me being more logical. You know, I need to visualize what's going on here. And I think the closer it is to the positive, the easier it is to identify, okay, this measures cell number 22. If it's in the middle, I need to look. That's the positive. Okay, it measures this battery. And then here over here. It's a bit more, it's a bit more intuitive. There, there, something like this. And now we have to, um, now we have to think about our connections here for the positive and negative of the whole battery. The cables are coming from below here and I cannot bend them sharp enough around the corner. So I would need to, well, we can either use another bus bar here and have a 90 degree angled ring lock, which then feeds the cable down and then in the bend here to the breaker. Or alternatively, we can, um, we can make one of the bus bars bend it. And do it like this and then have a straight ring lock all the way down to the breaker. It's not too bad actually here, right? And I've got so many of these bus bars, you won't believe it. Ah, decisions, decisions. Okay, I just made another one of these <laughs> to support my idea here. I like this one here. Let's do it. Okay, so before we get started here, I have to remove all the set screws because um, we have to do an important work before we actually get started. Polishing the terminals. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Relax, relax. I'm just kidding. I'm just making fun here. It's um, it's probably not a good idea to polish your terminals. Um, leave them as they are, clean them up and uh, leave them as they are. It's all good. Yeah, you can believe me, I have made my experience with that.
I've shown this in a previous video already. Someone gave me the tip actually to um, you can convert these single post terminals here to two post terminals. You just have to make your own bus bar. But that works quite nice. We can then have one side fixed connected to the circuit breaker and the other side goes to our P minus of the BMS and then we can replace just the BMS if you want to and keep the circuit breaker connected. So we don't need to touch this connection at all. I quite um, like this idea actually here. I think I'll make another one. I found this one a bit too thin here. I like these ones better. See, I told you, all these little things next to your project taking up a long, long, long time. And now it's already 5.30 and we haven't installed any battery at all, nothing. But we are now in good preparation, right? Yeah, yeah, super view. Everything in the picture. Yes, we have, we have. All right, so here's the idea. JK BMS, our new made terminals. Hang a 90 degree up here and a straight ring lug up here. Just need a piece of cable in between. Negative, done. The other side, we have our little bus bar here. 90 degree angle, terminal up here, straight terminal coming down from the breaker, cable in between, done. Of course the positive is one long run up here and then goes straight to our, to our bus bar up here. Cool, this is the whole setup. The only thing I have to do is I have to change positive and negative. So I have to start positive here, negative over here which gives us a nice clean installation in here. And then we can have our terminal row here and connect the balance leads directly to our terminal row. And now I could have started with the back row first, but I would have missed out of all the comments. So, well, big question about the talk of these terminals then. Um, the specifications say maximum of 8 newton meter before the actual terminal starts twisting. So we definitely shouldn't go with 8. I would probably start with 4 newton meter and then we have to see how we go. Okay. <laughs> That's our first little bus bar. Oh. Okay, we are mounting the BMS. Um, well, I don't know. We can potentially use some Velcro strips underneath to keep it fixed, but It's, it's not really necessary. I mean, if there's a bit of gap here, cooling, you know. Guys, it is already almost late night show. So give me a break until tomorrow. That is very good progress.